Welcome to September's Leco Challenge. Today's problem is robot bounded in circle. On an infinite plane, a robot initially stands at 0, 0 for the x and y points and faces north. The robot can receive one of three instructions. G, go straight one unit. L, turn 90 degrees to the left. And R, turn 90 degrees to the right. Now the robot performs the instructions given in order and then repeats them forever. Return true if and only if there exists a circle in the plane such that the robot never leaves the circle. In other words, does the robot travel in some sort of circular fashion? Now to give you a couple examples here, uh, GG, LL, GG, here it would go up, up, and then turn left, left, and then come right back, back, right back down, right? Down, down. So it starts at zero, zero, and then ends at zero, zero. Knowing that, this robot's just going to continue doing that forever, and it's going to exist inside a circle, so it never travels out forever to infinity. Here, GG uh, goes up two units and then repeats that, goes, goes up two units and then up two units and it just goes up, up and up and up forever. And here with GL, it goes up and then turns left, then it goes left, then it turns left, and so it goes in like a square, so that's technically like a circle, right? Now to give you a couple hints here, it says calculate the final vector of how the robot travels. Uh, it also says the ro if the robot the robot stays in a circle, if looking at the final vector, it changes direction or it moves zero. So in other words, if it stays in the same zero zero x y points. Now this kind of confused me at first. Like vector is this a linear algebra problem? But that's overcomplicating it. Like let's just think about this very simply. If we had a robot, right, and it either turns left or right at the very end whatever direction it goes, it's going to keep turning left once again, right? In that sense, it doesn't really matter how, what direction it goes in, whether it's going diagonal or what, it's going to eventually be a circle because it's always going to turn left at the final point. Same with right. If it turns right, wherever it goes, it's going to turn right, go that direction again, turn right and right and right. So it's like a circle again, right? The only exception to this is if it goes back into the middle. If it goes back into the zero, zero point, I'll always go back there. So whether it's whatever direction, it's, if it's facing the same direction, it's fine because it's going to go somewhere, come back, face the same direction, go somewhere, come back. So that's still technically inside of a <clears throat> circular plane, right? So knowing that, forget this whole vector thing that just overcomplicates it. Let's look at our instructions and think about how we could do this. So we already know G is going to be <clears throat> moving up one or moving a unit and left and right is changing direction, right? So what we might want to do is start with a starting point. And the way I did that was just initialize the X and Y points as zero, zero. Now we have a couple direct things we can do. We could for our instructions. So I in instructions, there's three choices, right? Either it's going to move up a unit it's going to move left or it's going to move right. So let's think about what that means. Now moving up a unit with G is going to change this X and Y points, right? We just don't know exactly how it's changing because we need to um, know which direction it's facing. So knowing that, like that kind of gives us a hint there, like what would that mean as far as directions go? So if let's say we were going up, what would happen? It would not change the x-axis, but it would increase the y-axis by one, right? Now, what about if it's going right? Well, then it would be increasing the x-axis one, but it wouldn't be decreasing the y-axis at all. Now, what about if it's going down? Now, if it's going down, then it would be decreasing the y-axis and it would not be changing the x-axis, or I'm sorry, the x-axis, decreasing the x-axis and not decreasing the y. And here, if it's facing left, then it's um, oh, I think I confused that. Sorry, it's going to be 0, negative 1, and this would be negative 1, 0, right? Because this is left, this is down, this is right, this is up. So what do, okay, we can have, use these directional points, I suppose, put this inside of a list. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is, depending on whether we're going left or right, move our pointer upwards if it's going right and move it left if it's going left or move it, yeah, move it, decrease it if it's going left. But what we'll have to do is like use a modular to make sure that we do this in a circular fashion. This is like 
uh, a cycle. Um, so that way we know that whenever we move left, it's going to move the pointer this way, this way, this way, and right moving this way. It's only when we move G, we're going to add to our X, whatever direction amounts we do have here, we add that to our X, Y, X, Y points. All right. So if, um, I equals G, what do we do? Well, let's first add whatever direction, uh, we're pointing at right now with the first element. So it's one of these, right? And at the beginning, it starts with zero. So how about we have some sort of pointer? We'll call it D and we'll say, all right, D right here. And we'll use the modular to make sure that it's going to uh, go circular around if it's like too much or if it goes uh, negative, right? Because there's only four elements. So we just use a modular there. Same way with the, with the Y, we'll say, D modular four, we'll get the second element. Now this is when we change, if it's left or right, this is when we change our D pointer. So if it's right, what we do, we will increase our D. Otherwise, if it's L, we'll decrease it. Now finally, what do we want to check? We want to check are we facing a different direction other than north? Because that's how we step. That's how we started. Or are we um, at the same point, right? So are we at the same point? Different direction. So we'll just return, um, let's say, whether x or y equals 0, 0. So that means we're at the same point. Or is this d pointer still pointing at the first one, or if it's not pointing at, the, pointing at the first one. So if it's, as long as it's pointing at one of these, then we know we're pointing at a direction, we're facing a different direction. So D, let's say modular four, does not equal zero. And that would be it. Let's make sure that this runs. So this returns true, let's submit that. And accepted. So is this the best way? Uh, I mean, it's pretty good, but I, I think there might be a mathematical way to uh, make sure that we're going to go. Um, maybe we don't need this array, but I'm not really sure how to do that. And really, it's so small that I think it's fine. Uh, let's like, let's just see with our details. It's about 60%, uh, 32 milliseconds. I think that's pretty good. And hopefully I explained that well. I think this is pretty intuitive. So... Thanks for watching my channel, and remember, do not trust me, I know nothing.